On September 6, 1976, an aircraft appears out of the clouds near the Japanese city of Hakodate on the northern island of Hokkaido. It's a twin-engine jet, but not the kind of short-haul airliner Hakodate is used to seeing. This huge, Grey Hulk sports the red stars of the Soviet Union. No one in the West has ever seen one before. The jet lands on Hakodata's concrete and asphalt runway. The runway, it turns out, is not long enough. The jet plows through hundreds of feet of earth before it finally comes to rest at the far end of the airport. The pilot climbs out of the plane's cockpit and fires two warning shots from his pistol. Motorists on the road next to the airport have been taking pictures of this strange sight. It is some minutes before airport officials, driving from the terminal, reach him. It is then that the 29-year-old pilot, Flight Lieutenant Viktor Ivanovich Belenko of the Soviet Air Defense Forces, announces that he wishes to defect. It is no normal defection. Belenko has not wandered into an embassy or jumped ship while visiting a foreign port. The plane that he has flown 400 odd miles, and which now sits stranded at the end of a provincial Japanese runway, is the McQueen Gurevich MiG-25. It is the most secretive aircraft the Soviet Union has ever built. The West first became aware of what would become known as the MiG-25 around 1970. Spy satellites stalking Soviet airfields picked up a new kind of aircraft being tested in secret. They looked like enormous fighter planes, and the West's militaries were concerned by one particular feature, they sported very large wings. On September 6th, Belenko flew off with fellow pilots on a training mission. None of the MiGs were armed. He had already worked out a rough route, and his MiG had a full tank of fuel. He broke formation, and within a few minutes, he was over the waves, heading towards Japan. To evade both Soviet and Japanese military radar, Belenko had to fly very low, about 100 feet, 30 meters, above the sea. When he was far enough into Japanese airspace, he took the MiG up to 20,000 feet, 6,000 meters, so it could be picked up by Japanese radar. The surprised Japanese tried to hail this unidentified aircraft, but Belenko's radio was tuned to the wrong frequencies. Japanese fighters were scrambled, but by then, Belenko had dropped below the thick cloud cover again. He disappeared off the Japanese radar screens. All this time, the Soviet pilot had been flying by guesswork on the memory of maps he'd studied before he'd taken off. Belenko had intended to fly his aircraft to Chitos Air Base, but with fuel running low, he had to land at the nearest available airport. That, as it turned out, was Hakodate. Japan only really knew what they were dealing with when the MiG made its surprise landing. The Japanese suddenly found themselves with a defecting pilot and a fighter jet that had so far evaded Western intelligence agencies. Hakodate's airport suddenly became a hive of intelligence activity. The CIA was scarcely able to believe its luck. The MiG was exhaustively examined after being moved to a nearby airbase to do a very particular job. The MiG-25 was not a very useful combat aircraft, says Connor. It was an expensive and cumbersome aircraft, and it wasn't particularly effective in combat. Belenko himself did not return to the USSR with his partially dismantled fighter plane. The high-profile defector was allowed to move to the United States, his U.S. citizenship personally approved by U.S. President Jimmy Carter, where he became an aeronautics engineer and consultant to the U.S. Air Force. His military ID and the notes he scribbled on a knee pad as he flew above the Sea of Japan are now on display at the CIA Museum in Washington, D.C. The MiG-25 shortcomings and the arrival of the American F-15 spurred Soviet designers to come up with new designs. Trimble says this eventually led to the Su-27 series designed by MiG's rival Sukhoi. It has been built in a myriad of ever-improving versions. 
It is exactly the kind of plane the Pentagon worried about at the beginning of the 1970s, fast and nimble, and the newer versions are probably the best fighter plane flying today, he says. The MiG-25 story hasn't ended entirely either. The design was heavily modified to create the MiG-31, a fighter armed with sophisticated sensors, a powerful radar, and better engines. The MiG-31 is essentially a full realization of what the MiG-25 was supposed to be, says Trimble. The MiG-31 entered service a few years before the end of the Cold War, and hundreds still patrol Russia's vast borders. Western observers have had plenty of opportunities to see the MiG-31 at airshows, though much of their inner workings remain closely guarded.